This is the story of how I learned to maximize travel rewards and credit card points to level up my travel game and go from flying in economy class to business class and eventually first class and the seven lessons I learned along the way to help you do the same. Let's rewind way back to childhood where I was growing up in China, first in Hong Kong and then in Beijing. Now I was lucky to travel a fair bit as a child with my family but every time we flew we were flying in the back of the plane and every time I would be very curious when passing by the business class seats. How come we don't get to sit here I'd ask my parents. And my mom would always brush off the question and joke, you'll have to pay for it yourself in the future. Little did she know that's what would happen, but not in the way that she thought. Fast forward to about 2010. We were on a school trip somewhere else in China, somewhere in the south, Guangxi or Guizhou or somewhere like that. And I distinctly recall that we were at the airport and a friend of mine and I decided to wander into the VIP airport lounge. We thought, what's the worst that could happen? If all these dressed up businessmen were in here, why couldn't we be? We sauntered in, sat our butts down and promptly got Got booted out of there by the staff. But the reason I tell you this is because I've always had a general curiosity and a bit of an irreverent streak when it comes to wanting to elevate my travel experiences, and I think that's served me well over the years. So that's lesson one. A bit of an irreverent streak goes a long way in the art of elevating your travel through rewards points and credit cards. A certain willingness to take risks in order to gain an advantage. After all, not everybody does this, but if you're also generally curious about what it would be like to fly business class and stay at nice hotels, and you're willing to take a few risks here and there, then you've got a great chance of success. Flash forward now to university. Between 2012 and 2016, when I was flying regularly between Toronto, Canada, where I was attending university to visit my family back home in Beijing as a student. Now, I was still flying in economy class, but I was intrigued by the prospect of going to the airport lounge before my flight. In particular, the Maple Leaf Lounge in Toronto, which it's crazy to think about now, but it seemed like a utopia to me. A mystery Eden in the middle of a busy airport, locked away behind those unforgiving glass doors, hallowed halls reserved for only the upper echelons of society that I as a lowly student could only dream of entering. Now hold on though, because this is where things take a turn for the... Greek? At the time, Aegean Airlines, the Greek national carrier and a relatively new member of Star Alliance, was offering Star Alliance gold status simply by earning 19,000 tier miles, essentially flying 19,000 miles in distance on paid fares, whereas other Star Alliance members typically require 50,000 tier miles for the same status. I figured that if I could credit my Toronto-Beijing flights to my Aegean Airlines account rather than my Air Canada or Aeroplan account, I'd qualify for Star Alliance gold status with just a handful of flights, which I could then use to enter the Maple Leaf Lounge in Toronto without ever having set foot on Aegean Airlines itself. So after doing my research, I proceeded with this strategy, and sure enough, after crediting a few round-trip flights to Aegean, I qualified for Star Alliance Gold, and I swiped my Aegean Gold car at the Maple Leaf Lounge in Toronto. I tasted my first bite of those signature stale cookies, and had my first sip of those frankly quite pedestrian machine-brewed cappuccinos. But because it was free, it was so much more delicious. So that brings me to the second lesson. Even when flying economy class, airport lounge access can be a great way to take that first step towards elevating your travel experience. It was very much the gateway drug for me to pursuing better travel and over the years I found that it tends to be the case for many of you as well. Of course something I didn't know at the time was that I had gone about getting lounge access the hard way. I could have simply gotten into a lounge by signing up for the right credit card. And that's exactly where my attention shifted next. How do all the credit cards work? After all once you delve into the world of airline perks you inevitably get sucked into the world of credit card points and benefits next. So I dove deep into all of the resources on Online. Of course, at the time, I didn't have this channel where I could just click to subscribe to, and began plotting out my credit card strategy, signing up for the best offers on the market in order to earn the most points. Of course, as a fresh graduate from university, I didn't exactly have very much disposable income, so my spending capacity was therefore constrained, and thus I started off with no annual fee or first year free cards with low minimum spends. And that's lesson three. When first starting off, focus on these low hanging fruit cards so that you can rack up meaningful quantities of points without having to spend a lot. Between myself and my partner Jesse, I was able to earn enough American Express and Aeroplan points for a round the world trip in business class, but there was still a challenge. I had never actually used points to book a flight that wasn't in economy class before. I went back to studying all the resources online again, learning about how the mysterious beast of award availability works, and I eventually plotted out a two-week, three-stop trip for May 2017, which was booked all the way back in September 2016, eight months in advance as I wanted to ensure I found the best award availability. During 
this process, I discovered that redeeming points is harder than earning points, as it's somewhat simple to sign up for a bunch of credit cards and use the right one for the right purchase, but mastering award availability and putting together a trip that works for you is a lot more of an art than a science. And that's lesson four. Give the redemption side of the game at least as much attention as the earning side, since that will actually allow you to book your dream trip when the time comes. May 19th, 2017. I flew my first ever long haul business class flight on Brussels Airlines, but having flown business class and elevated my flying style, I still had a problem. Hotel stays. After all, hotels could get quite expensive, especially on longer trips, and I was curious if there was a way to use points to offset the cost while also getting a better experience by aiming for hotel elite status. The problem was that there's only two hotel credit cards in Canada, the Marriott Bonvoy ones. I wondered if there were any more options, and that's when my attention turned towards US credit cards, where there's a much wider range of options on offer, including credit cards from Hilton, Hyatt, and IHG. And of course, even better Marriott Bonvoy credit cards than the ones we have in Canada. I embarked on the journey of setting up a US credit file which involved getting a US address, a US bank account, and an ITIN number. That's a whole very involved journey that we've made a full video on before and you'll find the link in the description below. But for me, that was lesson five. If you live in Canada and you've maximized our own credit cards to a certain level, at some point you're going to want to diversify into US credit cards in order to capture all of the best offers out there. Coming back then from our round the world trip on which we had flown Brussels Airlines, Swiss, and Eva Air all in business class, my next step was, you guessed it, start planning the next trip. Now it was at this stage that I realized that no annual fee and first year free credit cards weren't really going to do the trick for me. They were nice for racking up points steadily without spending much out of pocket, but if I wanted to fly in greater style with greater frequency, I needed to earn points more quickly. And that meant turning my attention to premium credit cards, which came with bigger welcome bonuses, better earning rates, and better travel benefits, of course with bigger annual fees as well. But by paying those annual fees, I was able to earn the same number of points quicker, which meant putting each stage of my strategy into action sooner, which in turn meant being able to book more flights sooner as well. That's lesson six. Premium credit cards are the fastest pathway towards elevating your travel, and their annual fees are often justified as long as you maximize the card's bonuses and benefits. It's a shift in mindset here from maximizing points with minimal out-of-pocket costs to paying reasonable economy class costs for amazing business class experiences. And I tend to find that that's a shift in mindset that many points collectors need to go through in order to reach the higher levels of the game, myself included, back in the day. And yet, even then, the business class experiences were were great, but what about first class? I couldn't help but aim even higher to discover some of the best experiences available in commercial aviation, but of course, with so many travel aspirations on my mind, I needed to unlock even greater levels to the game of maximizing my points. And that's where I made a game-changing move by realizing that there was no way that I could figure everything out in this space by myself in this vast, overwhelming body of knowledge. I needed to meet and connect with fellow travelers and points practitioners in order to exchange knowledge, help each other level up our earning and redeeming skills, and build a strong network that would serve me over time. After all, researching everything on my own allowed me to take just one or two trips to get a taste of elevating my travel, but building that strong network of like-minded travelers would eventually help not just myself, but the entire community unlock the skill set of elevating our travel for life. And that, my friends, is lesson seven. Don't fly solo, build a strong network that you can contribute to and benefit from in order to raise your game by leaps and bounds, including learning about some things that don't often get talked about online. If building a strong community is something that sounds interesting to you, then I'd love to welcome you to the Prince of Travel signature event, which will take place in Vancouver on May 6, 2023. We're going to have a full day of panel discussions, presentations, and learning sessions, including a deep dive into US credit cards, lesson five that we talked about with myself, as well as my American YouTube credit card counterpart, Sebastian Fung from Ask Sebi. There's going to be a full lunch served, a drink ticket for every attendee, and you'll be able to network with your fellow points and travel enthusiasts and build that strong network that will help you travel better for years to come. Join us at the Prince of Travel Signature event on May 6, 2023, and I look forward to seeing you there. Now, of course, these days I'm very fortunate to be traveling very frequently since Prince of Travel has been my full-time business for the past five years and it's become my job and a dream job at that to pursue all of these elevated travel experiences and share them with you. And if you'd like to see more of the behind the scenes on what it's like to travel for a living, check out the new vlogs that we've been making on our second channel to follow along the journey. 